regards to typical behavior for a specific species, I've talked about there being outliers, individual outliers within a specific species. And in regards to Python Regis, I would have to say that Ezra here is an outlier in regards to when he's active. I never see him at night. He gets down on the ground in one of his hides at night, or he gets up in this cave hive, and I never see him from dark until dawn. And he is always awake and active during the day. And he's always up here looking for his lights to come on. And if they don't come on when he expects, he pushes on the screen and he investigates the light bars. Ezra is a cinnamon Mojave mahogany and he's a male. He was hatched on August 20th, 2021 and he got here on September 22nd, 2021. So he was just over four weeks old. And I'm not sure what makes him active during the day, but he is always active during the day. That's when he eats. That's when he comes out for exercise. That's when we do any training sessions or any short handling sessions. And I just thought I would share that with you. He is the only Royal Python out of all 14 of the Python Regis that we currently have here who exhibits this particular behavior of being active and alert and awake during the day and seeking out his lamps. And then at night, I never see him. Sorry I bothered you, buddy. Go, go back to what you're doing. This enclosure he's in is obviously not his adult enclosure the enclosure he was quarantined in and then that I decorated a little at a time as he got settled in. He's on the medium of the shy, bold temperament spectrum and he does come out for exercise. And he does explore activity stations and he explores the exercise tent. And he actually moved over here when I had this cage open. There's not a snake in it right now. And he explored that cage for a couple of hours yesterday. But he's not quite ready, in my opinion, to go into an adult full-size enclosure yet. Like the ones that you see down here that Sarah and Feather are already in, or if I put him in one, I'll put him in one without a shelf and I'll put his whole habitat inside it and leave the door open so that he can acclimate to the bigger space in his own time. He does like to come out and explore and be in new areas and he's not afraid, but he's just shy and timid enough that if something does startle him or concern him that he heads back to his enclosure and he's very comfortable still within this enclosure. So we will do a slow transition for him to a bigger habitat or put his entire enclosure in the bigger habitat. I wanna interject here and we'll just call this our behavior break for this episode. We've talked about this paper before. It's called Fear-Based Aggression and its relationship to cortico sterone responsiveness in three species of pythons. I've gone over this in a previous video, but I really encourage you to read the paper for yourself. It is open access, so it's available to you free in Google Scholar. It was published in 2020 in General and Comparative Endocrinology, and it's by Brashears et al. In this study, they looked at 16 royal pythons along with a group of children's pythons and Bismarck ringed pythons to determine what each of the species default fear response or anti-predator behaviors were. And while the children's pythons tended to default to escape and avoidance behavior, the Bismarck ringed pythons defaulted to striking, the anti-predator behavior of royal pythons was to ball up and hide their head between their coils. This is directly from the paper. Each species displayed a characteristic set of anti-predator behaviors with royal pythons remaining coiled with their head tucked beneath the coils. 
children's pythons attempting to flee and sometimes striking, and Bismarck ring pythons holding a steady strike position, striking frequently and only rarely attempting to flee. So what this is saying is the default fear response for Python Regis is to do this balling behavior, which is how they got their name in the United States as ball pythons. I don't like that name because I don't think it's respectful to the animal to name them after a behavior that they do when they're frightened, when they're afraid, and when they're fearful. I choose to use the name that's used in Europe, Royal Pythons. My point here is that when your Royal Python is balling up and hiding their head, it's because they're afraid, because they perceive a threat, and it is their default anti-predator behavior. It's a fear-based aggressive response. And for this particular species, what they do is they ball up and they hide their head. This is a snake that's afraid. They're very fearful. When your royal python is doing that, it doesn't mean they're comfortable and relaxed. It doesn't mean they're okay with what's going on. It means that they're afraid. Now let's go back to Ezra and take a look at an instance when he's a little bit worried and fearful. He was at his enclosure door and I opened it. But this time, instead of looking out, instead of tongue flicking, instead of coming out, or instead of just freezing or sitting at the threshold, he starts to do this bawling behavior. It's not really excessive, but you can see that he's worried. He's a little bit unsure. He's a little bit fearful for whatever reason on this day. And so he retracts his body into itself and he does a little bit of bawling up. This, on the other hand, is an example of when Ezra is just a little bit hesitant. His neck is coiled, but he's not balling up completely. This is Sarek. Sarek is bold. He's curious. This is body posture that is telling me that he is not worried. He's comfortable and relaxed. He's engaged in his environment, and he's actually moving towards environmental stimuli. No S shape in his neck at all. This is Ezra out on an activity station. He's cautious, he's not fearful, but he's just not as bold as some of the other snakes like Sarek that I just showed you. And then again, this is fearful behavior. If your snake's doing that, they're afraid. This is the time when you need to stop your interaction with your snake. If your snake is exhibiting any type of fear-based behavior, you need to leave them alone. You need to remove yourself from the situation and retreat, or you need to put your snake back into a location where they feel safe, comfortable, and relaxed. Continuing to interact with a fearful snake is not helping the situation. It's only going to make them more afraid of you and form very bad negative associations with you. They're obviously seeing you as something aversive. You want to build trust with your snake and you're not going to do that by force-based handling, forcing interactions when your animal is afraid already. This is the time when you back off, you leave them alone, you start the approach and retreat work, the gradual desensitization, the passive and active habituation until your snake is trusting you and your snake is not seeing you as a potential predator, as a potential threat, or as something that they find aversive and are afraid of. The more you intrude into their space, the more you remove them from their hides, the more you force interactions and handling, the more fearful the snake will become, the more they will hide, the more they will try to get away from you, and the less they will trust you. I just showed you some examples of some really fearful snakes and those were hard to see. This is a snake who's not fearful. She's an example of a snake that is trusting, is curious, and is not afraid of the environment outside of her enclosure and is actually, in fact, curious about coming to the door and seeking to come out. Now let's take another look at Ezra on a different day. He is active, awake, and alert during the day. It's about noon and his lamps haven't come on yet and he is up there investigating why the heck those lights aren't on yet. He has a halogen bulb and a UVB light bar up there. Now you'll notice one of the things he does when I get close, when I start photographing him, is he freezes. He doesn't ball up, he doesn't hide, he doesn't retreat, he doesn't escape and avoid, but he freezes. And that is a behavior that most animals do in order to assess whether something is a threat or not. 
So they freeze, it gives them time to decide if whatever that thing is they're worried about is something they need to be worried about or not. And if they're not worried about it, they go back to what they were doing. And if they are worried about it, then they can escape and avoid or get defensive. This is Ezra on a totally different day again. And you can see that he, when he's a little bit worried, just S's his neck. When he's not worried, he just comes right on out. And as is typical with a lot of snakes, instead of coming out the open door, they like to squeeze their body through the crack between the open door and the edge of the enclosure. That's very common behavior. Now here's Ezra coming out further. So you can tell on this particular day that he's not worried, he's not nervous, and he wants to come out and explore. And I believe this is the day that he ended up going over here to Rosalie's enclosure. Rosalie is at the hospital not because of any disease or illness, but because she's um, having some follow-up diagnostics after a surgery. So her enclosure was empty. 